Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. Delighted that you could stop by. And welcome to a session here for the WSET Level 3. So this is a wine educational channel, which is designed to help those of you that are studying in the world of wine. And also those of you that are really interested in the subject as we cover multiple topics and disciplines around the world of wine. Welcome to the level three. This is a series on California. So we are going to the United States talking about all things California. If you have any comments or questions or concerns, of course, you can get in touch by commenting on this video below. Make sure you click like because it helps us and make sure you click subscribe because it means you get updates from us. So let's rock and roll. You can also use the social media, of course, at the bottom of every slide. So California is a mightily uh, large section, as you'll see here. We're splitting it into nine parts, but bite-sized chunks that you can really get to grips with. Uh, so we'll see here that uh, pi uh, parts one through to four that's up to Napa, is in fact free content which will be available on the world of YouTube. Parts five through to nine, which includes the all-important short written answer question that I walk through with answers, will only be available on my e-learning portal. That's over at www.winewithjimmy.com. Okay, let's rock and roll looking at climate and grape growing of this very important region. Just before we get stuck into the climate, let's discuss, first of all, just a brief introduction about California's importance. So California is not only uh, the home to the vast majority of wine made in the US, but also it is home to the most celebrated styles. Um, somewhere around sort of 85% uh, to 90% of wine made in the United States of America is in California. And you'll see that it far surpasses many other states. Uh, the second place we find uh, Washington and then New York, then Oregon, then Texas after that. So it's but it's far, far bigger than any of those. Now, the combinations of warmth, the bright sun, and also the cooling influences from ocean and altitude mean that California's winemakers are able to craft a diverse range of premium styles from sort of the rich, big, powerful expressions that we know of, things like uh, Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa, but also to more elegant Pinot Noirs that we may find from places like Sonoma, Russian River, the Petaluma Gap, and many other places. Um, there's a lot of diversity to be found in this very celebrated wine region. Uh, the location of it as well. So here you'll see another map uh, just showing you that California extends for some 1,100 kilometers. It's very long, surpassing a lot of different latitudes. Uh, so there are vineyards actually found across most of its length, often uh, towards the coastal uh, coastal ranges, but also uh, in the Central Valley as well. Um, despite the fact that we have such uh, a large uh, range of latitude, because we are going quite a long way from Oregon all the way down here towards New Mexico, and we have this big, big uh, distance here. So latitude, though, it doesn't play the most important role here. Um, most important factors actually will be things like the ocean current, uh, which we'll have a look at next. So here you go. So the key influence here. So this is the um, exceptionally cold Californian ocean current. Uh, which is the real crucial factor. And this is what you see here. Now, we um, are looking at uh, a part of uh, the western side of the United States and Canada and Mexico uh, that you will see just here. So um, we've discussed this previously when we look at places like Oregon, for example, and Canada uh, with the Alaskan current, which comes down, creating quite a cool effect. And this continues as what we call the cold Californian current, which affects all of our places down here in California. 
Uh, north of Los Angeles, where most of the vineyards are situated, the coastline, coastline of California is mountainous. Uh, and these mountains actually shield most of the state from the cooling effect of the ocean. However, in the areas that are affected, the cooling eff effect can actually be very marked. And that, that is in places which are right next to the sea. And then there are gaps, valleys and gaps, uh, like the Petaluma Gap, for example, um, which creates uh, uh, an, an easy access area for these cooling effects. Okay, and um, some of these things happen. So the cold air is often accompanied by very important fogs. And this is drawn in from the ocean in the evening, lowering the nighttime temperatures. Uh, and in addition, it takes quite a bit of time for the morning sun to burn off the fog. And that means that the cooling influences actually then extend well into the day. If you take an example like Napa Valley, typically the fogs are very, very dominant, um, pretty much from about uh, 5.30 in the morning till about 9.30 in the morning until they are eventually blown off. The cooling effect can be so dramatic in vineyards near the coast that in some years, grapes can in fact struggle to ripen. And this is something which is not necessarily some, uh, something that people think about with California. Uh, typically, uh, we would say that California has very ease of, of ripening, but um, there are places where it can actually be impaired by this cooling effect. So you can actually get a struggle to ripen with certain, uh, certain varieties. And this is why we find often things like uh, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay in places like the Sonoma uh, the Sonoma County, uh, instead of things like Cabernet uh, as much uh, as you find in Napa. Um, those cold air and fogs, though, a bit more here, where, as I mentioned, where there are gaps in mountains, uh, the cooling effect can actually meet well in land. Uh, so there are valleys that uh, sort of lie at right angles uh, to the ocean, such as those like Monterey and Santa Barbara counties. And they act like funnels for the cold air. Um, but also, if you look at the San Pablo Bay, so if you've got San Francisco and the Golden Gate Bridge, San Pablo Bay just um, within that, uh, you get the funneling effect of the, um, the Pacific Ocean down the delta. Uh, it heads down towards Lodi and Woodbridge. Um, but there are some parts which don't have any exposure or very minimal exposure to these ocean currents, uh, such as the Central Valley. So the climate there is very hot. Uh, so this is your sort of San Joaquin and uh, Sacramento parts of California. Um, and this is important to think about as well in terms of some problems that may be associated with such hot conditions. Um, there can be a distinct lack of rain during the ripening season and water shortages are actually a real concern um, and where possible drip irrigation is widely practiced. Now the scarcity of autumn rain has always allowed growers to leave the grapes on the vine longer into the season. And this is what we call hang time. It's extended hang time. And this results in, of course, riper berries because they have gone through more ripening process, late ripening. And the possibility here is very concentrated flavors with high sugar levels resulting in typically very high alcohol levels in these wines. But as with many places across the world, there has been this movement to sort of fuller bodied, more alcoholic wines. But now there's a movement back towards fresher styles, locating grapes uh, from cooler sites, higher altitudes, for example, in all areas. Uh, those that are affected more marked by the ocean currents and earlier picking. All of these will uh, enable wines with greater freshness and potentially more balance behind them instead of being just powerful and rich. So there are some wonderfully fresh examples being produced across the whole state 
of California today. OK, so that brings me to the conclusion of this first video on California looking at climate and grape growing. We will now move on to black grape varieties, which is one of the larger sections. White grape varieties will follow that, which is a smaller section before then looking, in fact, at the geography of all of the uh, of, the, of the state. So going from north coast uh, down to central coast, central valley, and then finally wine laws. So please join me for part two. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please get in touch. You can do so by commenting on this video below. And if you do find yourself in the United Kingdom, it will be a pleasure to see you. So please come and visit me for a class a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.